The secretary made very clear in a speech he gave several weeks uh, ago in Tokyo where he laid out the principles that the United States supports when it comes to the end of this conflict in Gaza. One of those <laughs> principles was that there must be no reduction in the size of Gaza. And that remains our position, uh, and it will remain our position. So if uh, any proposed buffer zone was uh, inside Gaza, that would be a violation of that principle, and it's something that, that we oppose. With the, if it's with respect to something in Israeli territory, I won't speak to that. That's a decision for the Israelis to make. But we're very clear that, that when it comes to reduction in the size of Gaza, that's not something the United States supports. That will wrap for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Secretary made very clear in a speech he gave several weeks uh, ago in Tokyo where he laid out the principles that the United States supports when it comes to the end of this conflict in Gaza. One of those <laughs> principles was that there must be no reduction in the size of Gaza. And that remains our position, uh, and it will remain our position. So if uh, any proposed buffer zone was uh, inside Gaza, that would be a violation of that principle, and it's something that, that we oppose. With the, if it's with respect to something in Israeli territory, I won't speak to that. That's a decision for the Israelis to make. But we're very clear that, that when it comes to reduction in the size of Gaza, that's not something the United States to To crush Hamas, we will in parallel continue to, to facilitate uh, humanitarian support for the people of Gaza. Um, uh, that is part of our credo. That is part of our strategic goal. Once again, we will do everything we can to keep uh, uh, guards and civilians outside of the crossfire between uh, the IDF and the terrorists, and we will do everything to facilitate that that population receives water, medicine, food, shelter. So we have spoken that in the framework of the post-conflict relationships, Israel will, has to, will have to have a security envelope. We can never, allen, uh, never again allow terrorists uh, to cross the border and butcher our people the way they did on October 7th. And we can't take our eye off the ball. And so in a post-conflict reality, a post-Hamas reality, Israel will maintain for the foreseeable future overall security control. That will be a necessary prerequisite of any post-Hamas reality. Now, if you ask me about a buffer zone, let me be clear. Uh, you won't have a situation in the future where you can have Hamas uh, terrorists on the border, directly on the border, positioned just to cross over and kill our people again. There will have to be security arrangements on the ground to prevent that from happening. That is not Israel taking territory from Gaza, on the contrary. That is creating security zones where you have a, a, a special uh, a, a situation on the ground which limits the ability of people to enter Israel to kill our people. It's common sense. The Israelis will never stand for a situation that they had until October 7th, where Hamas terrorists are directly on the border. Uh, uh, I reject the comment that there aren't safer places in the Gaza Strip, precisely because we have specifically designated these places. The maps are there. People can see where they are and where people can go to. And once again, we've shared them with the humanitarian organizations. Uh, as precisely so they can beef up their effort to deal with the civilians who will relocate to these safer areas. The activities are taking place mostly in the northern Gaza Strip, but also uh, conducting precision strikes against specific targets of Hamas um, in the south. The mobilizations include over 400 targets that we've struck, engaged. Those targets include um, tunnel access points. They include uh, command and control positions. They include um, the ability of Hamas to operate freely in the north as they did over the last week. Uh, we are conducting our operations in simultaneously with a humanitarian effort that is ongoing and indeed today, throughout the day, um, several trucks have come, tens of trucks have come in to Gaza after being security cleared on the Israeli side and through into Rafah. From our perspective, we understand that this is going to be a long war, a war that is not bound by time at this, uh, uh, as we see it. And indeed, the reality is one where um, Hamas have uh, taken the last 16 years of their governance in order to build an extensive uh, subterranean capability, an extensive rocket array, uh, an extensive um, um, 
uh, an extensive uh, drone, explosive drone capability, and, uh, and this is the enemy that we are facing. I would say in the north the IDF is um, still meeting Hamas. There is an extensive uh, subterranean capability that Hamas has developed over the years. They are coming out of tunnels. Uh, launching attacks against our forces, and indeed there are, there are areas that before uh, the operational pause we did not uh, reach, we did not go to. So there are still areas that were basically untouched, perhaps for except for specific uh, air, airstrikes.